and today we have come back out here in nature on a beautiful sunny day and we're going to be testing the Canon 75 to 300 millimeter lens. I'm using it on the Canon 7D Mark II. We're going to see how this combination works. Now, the Canon 7D Mark II is a professional camera body. However, the Canon 75 to 300 millimeter lens is a kit lens. So this is a slightly weird combination we have, and we're gonna see how it works for wildlife photography. Now, one of the disadvantages of the Canon 75 to 300 millimeter lens for wildlife photography is the reach. It doesn't have the most extreme reach out there. I mean, I normally use the 150 to 600 millimeter lens, which is double the length of this. And even then, sometimes that isn't long enough. However, just now, a robin came and it landed on these branches right behind me. Now, that was crazy. I wasn't expecting this soon on to get a bird come that close, but it meant we, I could put it on full zoom and we were really close into the robin and could get some beautiful photos. So I really hope they turned out beautiful anyway. I was using a shutter speed of around 300. I think I was at 500 at first and then brought it down to 300 because it's a 300 millimeter length focal length and that's what you're meant to kind of match. The shutter speed and the focal length are meant to be on par. So yes, that's the rule. Generally we match the shutter speed and the focal length, if not more, but also if you do have to go a tiny bit less you can. So anyway, that's enough of the camera setting talk and I'll show you the Robin photos. And I'm on a path with trees on either side. And there's some blue tits hopping above. I think you can hear them. There are a few great tits as well, but mainly blue tits. And I only got one photo so far. But the point in this photo was to show an issue with this lens mainly, but also how to come around it. Because I've done this video before, believe it or not. You may have seen my testing the Canon 75-300mm lens, most popular one on my channel. So hence why we're out here again, but we're using a different camera today. But it's a much sunnier day today, and it was overcast last time we did it. So it's slightly different. Anyway, one of the things we found was a lot of chromatic aberration. And to combat that, what I'm doing is I'm raising the aperture higher than normal. Now this isn't good normally because it does mean we have to use more ISO and it makes the images more grainy. However, on the Canon 70 Mark II, it can cope with a bit more ISO and it also means that we can reduce that chromatic aberration. We do then get less background separation, but I think it's worth it for the less chromatic aberration. So that is what I did for this blue tit photo. However, it's still not a good photo. It's just a photo of the blue tit. And so I'm gonna hang around and see what other photos I can get. And then hopefully we'll get some good photos and I'll be able to show them to you. And we are now on a canal, so we're just walking. I'm walking relatively quickly because I can see ahead there are some horses. Show you what I can see. And the horses are drinking water from the canal, but they're right at the edge of the field. So my theory is I'm gonna try and use the, the wide end of the lens. That's the 75 millimeter end of the 75 300. And I'm gonna see if I can get reflections of the horses in the water. So let's give that a go and I'll show you the photos now. And I was just standing at the edge of the canal here for a while. I was kind of listening to the birds soaking in the sun. I wasn't looking for anything in particular. But then, while I was standing here, I saw something which didn't look right on a flower. It just looked a bit messy. I took this photo and it was quite obvious what it was. Anyway, I thought, you know, it's not that good a photo of a butterfly because it's quite ugly. Anyway, the butterfly then flew onto another flower where I could see its pattern much more and we got these awesome photos.
and I've just been walking, enjoying the sun and the bird call, but it's such a lovely day out here. And uh, I mean, we're getting a taste for spring because it is spring at the moment. It's the middle of March and hopefully this lovely weather will continue and we'll go into having an amazing summer because last summer, you know, we're not going to lie about it. It was pretty bad. There was next to no sun and it was cold and wet. Whereas hopefully this summer is going to be absolutely awesome. So it's probably a good idea that I do talk about the lens that I'm actually making this video about. And one of the things that is quite a big downside to this lens is the no stabilization. Now, as you can see, there is no stabilization. You wouldn't be able to see if there was anyway, because it would be inside the lens, but there is no stabilization on this lens. That can be quite annoying because it is a relatively long lens at 300 millimeters. You do get quite a lot of shake. If your camera also doesn't have built-in stabilization, then it's gonna be really shaky to look through, at least. Obviously, when you take the photo, you freeze the moment, and so that's not so much of an issue. And if you have particularly steady hands, then it's okay. But there will be a lot of shake, and that's another downside for video. I did try and video a great tit. It was preening on a bush earlier, doing lots of shaking and stuff, and you couldn't really appreciate it in photos. So I thought, I'll just take a video of it. Anyway, I got the camera out. The 7D Mark II is not particularly a video camera anyway. It is quite old now, and it doesn't have the stabilization or really the quality, so you can use it for video if you have like gimbals and stuff, but I don't have that, and besides, I don't wanna carry it on a long wildlife hike. So, I didn't take any video, but I did notice how, without any stabilization whatsoever, it is next to impossible to get good footage. So that is a downside to the lens. I've also noticed chromatic aberration on the rest of the photos I've taken. Pretty much every photo I've taken today has had quite a lot of chromatic aberration. Now, it's a very sunny day, as you can see. Um, so much so, the vo vlogging camera I'm using, I'm on f10, because otherwise it'll be overexposed, which is pretty crazy. So that means my aperture's really quite tight so it isn't overexposed, which I didn't think I'd have to do. It means we don't have that beautiful blur background that we would normally have from vlogging on a DSLR. Anyway, back to the lens. The chromatic aberration is quite a big issue, and even with the aperture higher, um, even with a higher aperture, there is still quite a lot of chromatic aberration. So I think that is one of the biggest downsides to the lens because the stabilization you can work around. The focal length you can't really, but also it is perfectly fine. It's just not the extreme length that you get on a longer lens. But the aberration is a constant thing. It's always there and it's, yeah, it's quite a big downside. So I'll show you the photos that I've taken along the way and I'll show you any more that I take. And we are now on a farm and we've just found a cow. Believe it or not, we found a cow on the farm, but the cow has a newborn baby. Now I'm looking, it hasn't even been tagged on the ear, which means it's probably born today. And she's licking it currently, so it's really recent and it's adorable. So I'll show you that baby cow and take some photos. And then I'll tell you my opinion about the Canon 75 to 300 millimeter lens and what I think about it. Cause so far I've been telling you facts about it and how it, how it works, but then I'll tell you about my opinion. But first of all, you've got to see this baby cow. It's adorable. And so now it's time to talk about what I think about this lens, the Canon 75 to 300 millimeter lens. I've said that a lot of times, 75 to 300 millimeters is just rolling off the tongue. I've said it so many times. So this was my first wildlife lens. When I started doing wildlife photography, this was the lens I got with my camera, the 250D, which I'm using to vlog now. And it served me well for a good few months. It was good. Um, I took lots of great photos. I'll show some of the photos here and I've also got sample videos which were some of the first ones released on my channel if you want to go check it out. And yeah, we got lots of good photos and I do like the lens. It's very usable, it's very easy. It's There's not any fancy switches for stabilization or anything, not like it. 
that complicated to flick a switch, but you know what I mean, it's nice and simple. It does what it does, it zooms you in with the camera, and then it zooms you out if you want to go wider. The lens, however, as we have seen, has its issues. It has huge chromatic aberration issues and also stabilisation issues. It's also not the sturdiest, which means it can feel quite vulnerable when out in the wild doing, you know, riskier things. So it doesn't have that insurance of a stronger, better built lens. The lens, however, is very cheap. You can pick this lens up for almost 100, I think just over 100 pounds. If you go on eBay, you can get it even cheaper. And it is a kit lens, so it's a beginner's lens, a lens which you buy if you're starting out and you're, or you're learning or you're on a budget. And that's why I think it's still a good lens. If you are a wildlife photographer who is just starting out on their journey, like I was a few years ago, then this lens is great to get you started. It lets you learn how to use the camera without focusing on the lens, but it also allows you to get some good photos. And if you're on a budget, very convenient because wildlife lenses can be very expensive. And obviously if you're starting out or you're just doing it as a hobby, then that's not necessarily a good thing. So in conclusion, I think it's a good lens for the price and if you are a beginner or on a budget then I think it's definitely worth purchasing because you can't get a lens that does the zoom range of this for any cheaper. If you have a larger budget I would go for the stabilized 70 to 300 millimeter version that's a stabilized better version of this lens or if you're specifically doing wildlife and want a longer lens then I'd go for the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens. I reviewed that and that is my main lens that I use and it's a very good lens. And so if you learned something about the Canon 75 to 300 millimeter lens or you just enjoyed coming behind the scenes with me and doing some wildlife photography, please like and subscribe. Also, drop down in the comments below any feedback you have or anything you would like to see me do as a video idea. I'd love to hear what you guys want because I really want to provide the videos that you guys want to watch. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.